Hi, friends. It's Becky Keefe, um, and I'm here with Mary Carver. Hi, Mary hello, Carver. hello. Oh, anyone else need a deep breath? I mean, I guess <laughs> only Mary can raise your hand. No, but if you're watching this, raise your hand. I need a deep breath. I need a deep breath. I'm just going to. Yes. Take a sip of my tea. Um, friends, uh, Mary and I are here because we are going to be talking about empowered, empowered more of him for all of you. Just look at this glitter. Look, I mean, it's so oh, pretty. It's shiny. More of him for all of you encourages brand new 60 day devotional launched into the world yesterday. If yes. you're watching this as it, as it posts, uh, February 15th, <laughs> Um, this sweet little book uh, launched into the world. And Mary Carver, you are one of the authors of the Empowered Devotional, along with our friends Anna Rendell and Grace yes. Cho. And so I want to I want to talk about more empowered, more of him for all of you. What is what does that mean? Well, it means that God is not just concerned about the churchy part of us, hmm. you know, he's not just concerned about where we go to church, how often we read our Bibles. Um, if we listen to worship music in the car or like, and he's not even just concerned about, you know, did we say cuss words in front of our kids when we were driving in traffic, <laughs> you know, or were we nice to our husband when he was sick? and we were short on patience, mm -hmm. that might be a very specific example that I'm pulling from my own life. Um, you know, like he doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, God certainly, certainly cares about those things. And he is um, like ready and, and waiting and willing to help us in each one of those things. But he also cares about, did you eat breakfast this morning? Mm -hmm. Did you get a good night's sleep? Mm -hmm. Um did that hurt your feelings when your friends um, posted on Facebook about a girl's night and they'd never even invited you? Mm -hmm. He cares about and wants to be part of every single part of our lives. Yeah. And he wants to give us the strength and the courage and, and whatever we need in that moment, in that space to deal with it and to do it like Jesus would. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That right there is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> right, right. Because it speaks to just that God is Yahweh. He is El Roy. He is the God who sees, who has compassion and grace and pours out love and kindness and truth in all aspects of our lives. And so if you guys, if this is your first time hearing about Empowered, uh, what's something I love about this devotional, which is unlike other ones that Encourage has done before, is that it really um, breaks down these five different key aspects of our lives as women. And I'm not talking about career, friendship, motherhood, <laughs> like, you know, those are important, but yes. um, it's, I love this from the back. It's, it's this is what this is going to help us do. Stop compartmentalizing your faith and experience God in every part of your being, physical, mental, emotional, relational, and of course, spiritual. And mm -hmm. so the fact that like, like you said, like God cares if you ate breakfast, not because <laughs> he wants you to be like, that's what I should do. But he's like, he, he cares for us and wants to nurture us. And so really you, Grace um, and Anna have, dug out scriptures and generously shared stories from your own life about what does it look like for God to reach into these different aspects of our lives. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you, um, I'll be honest that sometimes we even got confused ourselves. Like, wait a minute, how is mental different than like, how is the mental part of our life different than the emotional part of our life? Mm -hmm. And like, okay, how does God fit in there? Like we had to Mm -hmm. You know, in some ways this came naturally. Of course we, you know, you know, every once in a while the writing just flows, but other times we had to really listen to what God was teaching us of how, no, really he means it. Mm -hmm. like, he really does want to be part of every single part of us yeah. because he made every single part of us. 
Right. Not on accident. Not, not on accident. Yes. And so I, um, guys, I'm so excited. And I was going to say this for the end, but I'm just going to tell you now, keep watching. But, uh, <laughs> yesterday, uh, on encourage encourage.me, um, we are sharing an excerpt from Empowered written by Mary. Um, and as part of that article, we are also doing a massive Empowered giveaway. And so you're going to want to go. Good. It's so good. It's, I mean, you should go over and check it out, but I mean, there's a beautiful mug. There's two copies of the book. Um, there, what else is there? I, I, uh, there's oh, a, oh. like a, a perpetual calendar day brightener. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have, you know, something encouraging to read every single day. Uh, a necklace. necklace Did you say that yeah. yeah. A necklace that comes with prayer with, with, uh, with scripture cards and yeah, yeah, lots of fun stuff. So, um, make sure you go over, um, as part of that, you can also download, um, five free devotions. So you can get a taste of what this is about and read the table of contents and you'll just, yeah, see, um, all the different ways, um, empowered to be hopeful, empowered to be accepted, empowered to be resilient, the power of being in the right place at the right time. Like this is all about not like you go girl, like more self empowerment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that, that's really that. the way I say that. Let's just, <laughs> let's just skip over that. Um, but like, how does God meet us in the places where we really do need his wisdom, his power, his strength, his confidence? Um, cause I do, I need it. <laughs> I need it yes. in dealing with, my, my middle son who is phenomenal and so hard. And I'm like, God, I need, I need your empowerment. Like I'm willing mm -hmm. to read a book if you want me to read it, but really Holy spirit. Like, I just need to know that like when I'm having the umpteenth conversation with him, like that you are there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and just, it helps us, I think, remember uh, Cause a lot of these things, some of us know them, right? We know that we should turn to God. We know that we should, um, reread that scripture or, or, or whatever, but we forget when we're in the moment because life is tricky. Life is hard. Life is moving faster than maybe our brains are sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, you know, and I, I hope that reading our stories that we're sharing kind of, uh, I mean, we're not telling you what to do by any means. Cause I mean, who has it together? None of us, but it does. I think for me, here's what I'll say. When I read someone else's story and they tell me exactly like, this is how God helped me here, mm -hmm. or this is the, the one little thing I did that pointed me back to God and kind of shifted my whole day mm -hmm. that really, that I need that. Mm -hmm. Like I need you to hold my hand and connect the dots for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I, you know, my hope and Anna and Grace's hope for this book is that we can help, help readers do that. Yeah. And it does, it does. So I want to talk about, um, friends, if you haven't already go and read this for yourself, but in, um, today's article, yesterday's article on encourage, um, you are talking about the hidden battles that we endure. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that you use the examples of, um, you are, if you don't know this about Mary Carver, she is a <laughs> movie TV book aficionado. Fan. Fan yes. buff. <laughs> um, and so you're talking about, uh, Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel and these like, you know, amazing female characters and how like they have this outer strength, but they are fighting this inner battle. What is that like? How does, you know, that media metaphor, uh, like reflect your own life? Well, I, I have to tell you, I have seen Wonder Woman, the first one, uh, probably half a dozen times. And every single time when the scene that I describe in the, the Devo from yesterday, that's also in the book, um, every single time I, I come to that scene in the movie, I cannot stop crying because what happens is that she's fighting a physical battle, like in a war and she's holding up her shield and using her powers to deflect all the bullets raining down on her, um, not only for herself, but also for her team so that they can 
goodbye. Mm -hmm. And the way they filmed this scene, I might cry just talking about it. Nobody will be surprised. Um, like it, it just goes on for so long Mm -hmm. and she's standing there and we don't hear her say a word and we don't know what's going through her mind, but those bullets just keep coming and coming and coming. And my gosh, is that not what life feels like sometimes? Mm -hmm. Is that not what life feels like today? Mm -hmm. You know, the hits just keep coming and all we can do at our, at, at our very best is stand there and take it. Oh, it's so hard. But yeah, one of the things that I I noticed as I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about um, a scene from Captain Marvel. Yes, I was mixing my DC and Marvel metaphors. I I, I embrace it. You're fine. (laughs) Um, Is that what we see on the outside is this picture of strength and resilience. Mm -hmm. But what we realize later is that there is a whole, there's a whole other battle being fought under the surface. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what's going on inside of them. And so, yeah, Becky said she did warn me before we got on camera so that she was going to ask me the question that we ask at the end of the, of this uh, devotion is, you know, what invisible battle are you fighting right now? That someone might look at you and think that they know you and they have no idea. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I want them to be invisible, Becky. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I was like, Mary, come on. You know that we... <laughs> We have hard, awkward conversations. That's what we do here at Encourage for you guys knowing that you're not alone, that we do not have it all together, but that God is real. And yes. Yeah. And we go first. We go first. Go first. So what I thought of actually that I am dealing with um, in this very moment um, is, and I really didn't think of this much in advance but it is the perfect example of what we're talking about today and what the book is about, because, um, I'm trying to cut down on sugar. Mm. And if we hadn't already talked about what the book is about, what empowered is about, you might be like, okay, Mary, like Jesus cares about your sugar, but guess what he does. And more than that, like you might be able to look at me and be like, okay, not so surprised that this girl has a sugar problem. Okay, that's fair. But what you don't know, looking at me from the outside, but what God does know is how how much of a failure Mm -hmm. I feel like Mm -hmm. because I have such a problem with sugar that my doctor has to tell me, look, lady, you got to clean it up now. And And that's, that's the actual hard part, right? You know, it's okay. I mean, I really like sweet stuff, so that is hard. Um, but it's, it's, it's the fight that goes on in my head and it's, it's how I talk about myself. Right. And it's how I, how I automatically respond when I share with a friend that I'm working on this. And she's like, Oh, you got this. You can do this. Mm -hmm. And my answer is, I mean, maybe, Mm. You know, like, I don't really believe that. I don't believe that I can uh, make a different choice today than I have the last 43 years, Mm -hmm. but I'm trusting God Mm -hmm. that he can help me make a different choice, not just in what I put in my mouth, but in how I treat my heart. Yeah. Like my emotional heart. Right. I mean, also my physical heart. It's all, you know, it's right. right. It's all connected. (laughs) is it really is and so you know even if you did know the battle i'm fighting Mm -hmm. which is you know try not to damage my physical body any more than i already have Mm -hmm. what's invisible is my heart and my head that gets so mixed up and so ugly and the work god keeps doing in me to say no mary you are not a failure Mm -hmm. I made you, I love you. I'm with you. Mm. I've got this, not me, Mary. God's, God's got this. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. And I think it is a perfect example of the fact that like, so often there's this outward battle and it is like, it's a, it's an actual battle. And I, I, 
I, I relate in many ways. There's an actual battle to be like, I am, I'm not going to buy that fill in the blank, you mm-hmm. know, M&Ms or, or cookies or whatever. Or if it's in my house because there's been a birthday or a holiday <laughs> or for my children, like I don't have to like eat, you know, whatever in order because I'm bored or I'm, or I'm anxious or I'm numb or whatever. Like that is a, that's a battle. But what you're saying, God sees that, that he knows what was going on inside Diana's mind and Carol's mind. These are, yeah. these are our superhero friends. If you guys, <laughs> Captain Marvel yeah, and Mary Carver, like he knows and he is with you in that battle of what you say to yourself about mm-hmm. yourself. Um, and really the amazing thing, and you, you alluded to this before, Mary, like, while I'm really grateful that this book, you know, at the, at the, um, <clears throat> so each devotional, it's so pretty too. It has your title, it has a scripture, and then it'll tell you, um, mm-hmm. emotional and like it, it's, um, you know, they're scattered, they're scattered throughout, um, but really so much of it is, is interconnected. Yes. Um, and I think that speaks to how, how much we need God. We, we can't even compartmentalize our own struggles. Like, well, I'm <laughs> fine in these other four areas of my life, but it's just, it's just my mental health or, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, you know, my physical health. Like if you're like, oh, well, the doctor said do this. So I'll just do that. And then it's fine. Yeah. Like we, we need, <laughs> we need God to come and, help us navigate the things that only, that only he can, because it is, it is too hard. It is too much. It is too complex for us just to like strong arm our way through. Yeah. And I think that, I think that what I shared with you, maybe not everybody watching, you know, struggles with candy or brownies or whatever, but Mm -hmm. you know, it's the same thing for you might be able to share with someone or someone that might know from watching you or being part of your life. Like you're trying to know, you know, Maybe you're not trying to avoid buying a candy bar, but a lottery ticket mm-hmm. or another makeup palette or, you know, a, bottle of wine, or, or a bottle of wine, or you're trying to not go to that website or not scroll for an hour every night mm-hmm. or, you know, wh- whatever, like we all have things yeah, and, and we can talk about them and people can see them up here on the surface, but then there's something else going on down below and we need God in both places. Yeah. Yeah, we need God in both places. So I know, and this is the thing I love about Encourage too, and I love about you, Mary, is that we talk about stories like when we're not at the end of it, like nice. we're smack in the middle. So I know that you are smack in the middle, but like, how have you seen God meet you in this battle? Um, what what has that looked like for you? I think the biggest, biggest way I've seen God show up for me in this is that he has a uh, surrounded me with friends who are kind and wise. Mm. And so, and, and a couple of friends actually who have said, oh my gosh, my doctor just told me this exact same thing for the exact same reason. And I'm working on it too. Mm. And I would not have guessed that. Like you might be able to guess it by looking at me, but I would not have guessed it by looking at them. Mm -hmm. And, but I've got friends who have said, okay, you know, here's what I've learned, or here's an article that I read that, you know, helped me, or here's what my doctor said. But then at the same time, they're also saying, uh, you know, like be kind to yourself. Yeah. Like yesterday I, um, I messaged some friends. I was like, well, I avoided all that extra Valentine's day food yesterday, but I definitely just had two large brownies, Mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing. And they're like, that's okay. That's okay. You know, like it happens. You made all those other good choices and balance and, you know, baby steps and they say all the right things and they mean it. And I, could I do it without them? As long as I've got God on my side, of course. Yeah. But I don't have to, Mm -hmm. because he's given me that, which I so thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. And so often we do get to see God's kindness, his, his comfort, his strengthening through other people. You know, I think about, you know, Moses was called to be the leaders 
the leader of, Is of, of, of the Israelites, but when they were, you know, in a battle and Moses had to keep his staff raised. Yes. And then they held up his arms. He, yes. He couldn't do it by his own strength. So God gave him Aaron and her to mm-hmm. physically help him hold that up. And, um, we're not, we're not meant to do life alone. And often, yeah, God's saying like, I'm going to empower you means I'm going to send someone to come alongside you. Yeah. Yeah. I've totally seen that, um, in my own life as well. And even though I share this, you know, I share about my, my, my struggle on social media and, and through writing at encourage and stuff, but something that an inner battle that people just who maybe know me from church or something may not know is that I battle anxiety. Um, and sometimes I'm doing great. And other times like it rears its ugly head and it is an ugly battle. I mean, it's a clinical diagnosis and it's not just like for so long, I used to think, well, just Becky, just manage your time better. Just get on top of things, just rest more and eat better and exercise and, um, and do these things. And, you know, I even remember I was, um, I was in a grocery store and, um, like overstimulation. If I'm, if I'm having like an anxiety, um, trigger, it can just like make it flare. And so all of those micro decisions and the fluorescent lights and the navigating the cart. And I mean, it's just normal everyday stuff, but for someone with anxiety, like it can just be like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like pushing all of these lights on until you're like blinded by the light and you can't see. And I remember um, someone close to me was with me and I, I got up to pay and I couldn't put my card in the right way. And this person who, who loves me didn't understand what I didn't understand the battle I was in and was, and even said in their own frustration, what's wrong with you? Mm, Ouch. And that's the very voice that I say to myself, like, what's wrong with you? Like, why can't you just get it together? Um, and so how I've seen God meet me in that invisible battle is with both the tenderness and the strength, he's not saying, Becky, what's wrong with you? Like in a disgusted, disappointed way, I've like learned to hear the voice of God that says like, oh, I'm sorry, this is so hard. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry that there are things that are out of whack in Mm -hmm. your physical and mental chemistry that is causing Mm -hmm. this normal thing to be not normal for you today. Um, And I think that's why I'm really also grateful for, for you, Mary, and for our friends, Grace and Anna, as well as to, to share the stories that we can feel like I'm the only one. I'm the only one who thinks, not thinks, for whom a brownie is a battle. I'm the only one for whom, you know, um, anxiety is a battle. These aren't issues of like, you're not a good enough Christian. You are not a strong enough believer. These are issues of we are women that who God loves and we are women who need him and we are made to need him. Um, and so I love it, that more of him for all of us, like more of him for all of us in, um, in all of who he made us to be. And, and, and part of who he made us to be is all the, all of the strengths. And then also this reality, right. Of like, we live in a fallen, broken, sinful world and we are living in the reality of our own sin and the reality of living through the consequences of other people's sin and just the fact that like so much of this it's not supposed to be this way there's not supposed to be mental illness and physical illness and brokenness and betrayal and all these things that that we go through um but that god is still here with us um and that really gives me um a lot of courage Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'll tell you like Grace, Anna, and I all shared stories that we did not want to share. (laughs) We really did because we just felt like, gosh, we did, you know, it's hard to be so transparent about the place, the broken places. Mm -hmm. Um, but our hope is that 
like you said, like we all, we, like we come to, you know, we come here with our strengths Mm -hmm. and then our reality is our challenges. And Mm -hmm. of course, you know, God, God meets us there and he, he fills those empty spaces and he heals those broken places, but also we're able to come alongside each other and balance each other out. I mean, it's the body of Christ, you know, if you don't want a body full of all perfect noses, that would be weird. (laughs) So I, I think that, yeah, sharing a book like that, I don't, I don't know. Obviously you can just read the book by yourself, but you can also share it with a friend, Mm -hmm. maybe let it lead to conversations that you could share your own struggles that maybe they don't know about. Yeah. 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 And like we said, at the end of each, um, devotion and friends, they're just like a couple pages long. Like this isn't like, this is so doable for anyone, but at the end there is this section reflect. And so, um, it's, it's not just about hearing someone else's story, but ingesting scripture and then asking God that question, like, like, what do you want to say to me? How does this look in my life? And you're exactly right, Mary. I mean, these would be powerful questions to journal through, um, just a process with you and God, but if you want to be brave and awkward and really (laughs) grow and experience, I think all that God has for us, um, to bring your own struggles out of the darkness of isolation and into the light of shared experience. And I guarantee that not only will you experience freedom and greater healing, but you will also help give that gift to someone else by sharing your story, just like you were talking about Mary with you and your friends about, you know, about sugar and to know like, Oh, I'm not the only one who needs to grow in this area. And I can't do it by my own, by my own strength. I need God's empowerment to really find that physical healing is also that mental and emotional, um, breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, get your own copy of empowered friends. Uh, it's available on dayspring.com, Amazon, wherever books are sold. And, uh, we will put links here for you, depending on where you're watching this. If you're watching this video on launch week, which is the week of February 14th, come and enter the giveaway. Um, You can also find more resources, uh, encourage.me slash empowered book. Find out more there and check out our socials. Just scroll through because you'll see some great conversations um, that Anna, Mary, and Grace have had about this book. Um, The Encourage podcast, find both (laughs) episodes there. I mean, really like friends, we are just- We are everywhere. We are everywhere. (laughs) They are everywhere. And this needs to be everywhere. Grab a copy for you and a friend and um, and then let us know, share your stories, um, you know, on our social channels, on our websites, pop in our DMs and encourage, or just, you know, even directly to, to Mary or Anna or Grace would absolutely love to hear what God is doing in your life um, and how we can pray for you and cheer for you and um, just see more of him for all of us. So Mary Carver, I'm grateful for you, friend. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this, Becky. It was fun. All right. We'll talk to you guys later.